Alabama, Texas A&M. Dan, this right. was this is a big guy. Yeah, this was Dude. 26 to 20. Alabama wins the game over A&M on the road. We. I don't know if I want to play the sound. We may have a zombie Alabama situation brewing. OK, we may have one brewing. So the zombie Alabama situation for people who are listening, don't know what we're talking about. Zombie Alabama is when Alabama tastes its own blood and then turns into a zombie that you cannot kill. Yes. And I started to get that zombie Alabama feel again, watching Jalen Milrow in some key moments, watching him drop back when Jalen Milrow has time to throw. And when he's got a guy streaking down the field, he's very good at throwing a deep ball. There were some beautiful passes. Yeah, he and I mean, it started out with Isaiah Bond earlier on in the season and Jermaine Burton and Milrow had a nice connection. Yeah, continue. When he has time to throw that deep ball, there's a lot to like about his game. There also are other moments like the interception that he floated over the middle yeah. in the early portion of the third quarter, whenever it was, that make you remember oh this is still we're still having some questions about this quarterback thing at alabama but look career highs for him on the passing front 321 three touchdowns did have that one pretty bad interception um but what they did a good job of in this game if only because the line gave him time for some of those deeper roots to develop when he does not have to make that quick decision when it's not like a bang bang read and quick throw it over the middle when he has a chance to really set his feet and throw. Um, he can be damn effective. And he was in this game. He was really, really good. Um, this was, I thought, a bit of a coming out party for him. I thought the fact that Alabama was able to win this game against a tough defense on the road, pretty much on the um, power of his arm and passing ability was a pretty big hurdle for the squad because that is not something we have said to date. It has been an offense that we have thought first and foremost as a running offense, and they just did not get it going on the ground. No, they game. didn't run. No, they didn't run. Was... They, didn't, they didn't have to, right? It was Jalen Milrow. They had an opening. They took it. They trusted him to make those plays, and I think that's really significant for what it could mean for Alabama the rest of the way. You you just spent so much time saying so many correct defensible words without mentioning Texas A and M at all, which is, I mean, it's sad to talk about Texas A and M. They're up at halftime, seventeen ten. Obviously, Max Johnson, backup quarterback. There's talent on both sides of the ball for A and M. Look, it's really interesting receivers with what Moose Muhammad and Evan Stewart, Anaya Smith. Uh, I think it was Evan Moss in the backfield making plays. They've got no offensive line. I think at yep. one point the center tripped over the right guard's leg at the same moment that the left guard got pushed back and two guys ended up on the ground tripping over each other on a, I think it was like on third and 10 or something like that. Yeah. There's a lot to like about Texas A&M. There's not a lot to like about this offensive line. There's not a lot to like about how the secondary seems to be being coached at times. And there's certainly, this is an offensive line that needs to be overhauled and they just, had no answer, especially when you're protecting a quarterback in Max Johnson, who we talked about this tends to hold on to the ball too long. And yeah. you're coached by a head coach who once again shrinks away. You mean shrinkage? Yes. <laughs> Significant shrinkage. After Significant game, shrinkage. Yeah. They, they, how many points did they score in the second half of this game? Three points? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So they're up at halftime and they lose the second half 16 to three. I think the, the concept of making adjustments at halftime can be a bit overblown considering, right? You got to get to the locker room. Guys are going to the bathroom. Guys are rehydrating, whatever. There's a lot going on at halftime for you to be like, all right, forget the quarter stuff we were running. This is how it... that's not happening at halftime in the way that I think a lot of us hope it does when we're rooting for our teams to make uh, and take advantage of those moments. But Alabama got more comfortable and maybe it's a mental thing. And Alabama's offense, you're absolutely right. There's no identity to it beyond Let's hope Jalen Milrow makes a better play than that last one, or that the one that he, you know, put on to the put on tape five plays ago or whatever. And he seems cool, calm, and collected. I don't know if he has the poise in the pocket to step into throws consistently on rhythm, but he also, I think, on one of the the touchdown throws to Jermaine Burton along the right sideline, I think that was like his fourth progression. You could see him scanning left to right. So it's not like he's like a one guy and go. 
and he's good, but he's kind of high pitched good. Like he's good, but you're not convinced he's obviously to a Mac Jones, Bryce. Young. No, he's not. He's not. And and let me make another point but on Alabama, enough, right? I mean, oh yeah, good enough. Absolutely good enough. I mean, there's still a lot of teams that would that would take that. They can make cookies. Play. Aren't great, but they're good enough, Ty. When you they're good cookies. enough. No, yeah. they are. We um should probably talk about the Alabama defense. Let's. Because especially in the second half, you know, Jalen Milrow was good. He was good, right? Yeah, right. He's high pitch good. He's good. <laughs> but if not for the key plays by this defense, this game has a much different result. They had the two early A and M and the two early red zone trips. They came away with three points. Bama had some key sacks. They had a block kick. They forced, by virtue of their pressure, uh, a holding penalty in the end zone for a safety. They did change the tenor of this game with their defense um, in a way that over the course of 60 minutes really, really started to add up. Bama was not flawless on the offensive side of the ball. I mentioned the bad interception. They had a ton of procedural penalties early on. So like I think they, they had like, I think they had five times more penalty yardage than A&M in this game. Yeah. I mean, it was wild. They had 14 for 99 in total, but they had, I want to say eight or nine procedural penalties in the first half alone. And they need to get that resolved. But given the fact that the defense played, I think as well as it did, of course, there were big plays throughout this game. But by and large, the way that the Bama defense stepped up in the second half, especially, I thought was was really, really telling. Um, there is this thing, and then we should probably move on. Jimbo not going forward on fourth and one from the 45. <laughs> What was what was the quote? It was something like, you know, if it, if it was a foot closer or something like that. <laughs> it's like, that's not how it works, Jimbo. It's just not. You're either an aggressive coach who needs to bring touchdowns to a field goal party or is bringing field goals to a touchdown party. And it was clear that the touchdowns weren't happening for A&M. It was clear that Alabama saw blood in the water with the A&M offensive line. And that's when... You need to get on the horn with Bobby Petrino and be like, we need to kind of run it like this. We need to kind of think about our offense in terms of this. Because if we're not taking advantage of our third and shorts and fourth and shorts to keep drives going, to maybe wear down this Alabama front and get them going the wrong way, use misdirection, whatever it is, then it's, they're clearly going to lose. And Jimbo just coaches losing football because he's right. not coaching to win. He's not coaching to push a team around. He's not coaching to keep a team on their heels. He keeps his own team on their own heels, which seems sort of antithetical to the whole point. There and was so, significant shrinkage. There was significant shrinkage. And what's the conclusion on Alabama? Right now, they've beaten Ole Miss. They've beaten a and We'll get to LSU, who looks very vulnerable, even though they <laughs> won, to say the least. They've beaten Mississippi State. Yes? Am I, are these all correct? These are all correct. They don't have LSU for a little bit, and LSU is going to score on everybody, but they're not a complete team. Like, Alabama's just sort of rollerblading to Atlanta at this point. They're just gliding through, and there's not much in the way in their way. And I don't know. It's, it's wild to think about, given the, the still obvious limitations of this Alabama team.